When asked about the reliability of this model, my old friend, who worked for more than 12 years in one of the official Audi technical centers, replied that he would not even remember a single serious flaw right away. Well, you'll have to check. In 1998, the arrival of the Audi TT Coupe made a splash. Its aerodynamically slick body attracted close attention even from those who were not particularly interested in cars. And outwardly, it is still quite relevant today. The second generation of the model was greeted noticeably calmer, although the sports coupe has become more solid in appearance and significantly larger than its predecessor, and the design is not as extravagant as before. This car has changed a lot technically. Its body is almost 70% aluminum alloy, however, the doors and trunk lid remained metal for the sake of a more correct weight distribution along the axes. The rear suspension became independent, the front-wheel drive versions on the predecessor were with a torsion beam. Initially, only petrol engines were offered for the Audi TT, 2.0 liter, 200 horsepower, and V6 3.2 liter, 250 horsepower. Moreover, with the base engine, the Techka was front-wheel drive, and with the V6, with a Quattro transmission, the scheme of which is the same as on the Audi A3, with a Haldex multi-plate clutch in the rear-wheel drive. By the way, the engine of the TT, like that of the 3 ruble note, is located transversely, and in an all-wheel drive transmission, under normal conditions, 15% of the torque is supplied to the rear axle. However, the clutch can close open completely, transferring back up to 100% of thrust. The car was sold as a coupe and roadster, which debuted five months later. As for the configuration of the Audi TT, it already has a leather interior, power accessories, heated front seats, bi xenon headlights, four airbags, climate control and a CD radio as standard. Options included an S-Tronic transmission, magnetic ride electronically controlled dampers with variable stiffness, an Audi Symphony audio system with CD changer, cruise control and adaptive headlights. So, about Audi TT mechanics speak only positively. Nevertheless, we managed to find shortcomings. For example, it is reliably known that the most massive 2.0 DFSI engine is an oil-eating champion. After 100,000 km it needs 700 to 1,000 grams per 1,000 km. If replacing the oil separator in the crankcase ventilation system and valve stem seals does not help, you will have to change the piston rings. Spark plugs and ignition coils wear out quickly from Ukrainian gasoline. Injection nozzles can also fail. The timing belt is also at risk, the condition of which after three years of operation is desirable to be checked at each mo. MCPs do not cause problems, you don't even need to change the oil in them if you follow the manufacturer's instructions. But the S-Tronic transmission, an analog of the Volkswagen DSG, can spoil the mood. In traffic jams, she tends to twitch from first to second gear. Closer to 100,000, the clutches and dual-mass flywheel may need to be replaced. The service life of suspension parts depends on the driving style. True, the steering rack may become unusable ahead of time. The most popular powertrain is the 2.0-liter turbocharged petrol. It is characterized by increased oil appetite and requires periodic inspection of the timing belt. This belt drives the exhaust camshaft, from which the intake camshaft is driven by a chain. It is desirable to control its condition at each mow or after 15,000 km of run. Otherwise, repair or replacement of the cylinder head will be required. The 6-speed S-Tronic has problems, and they are traditional. This is jerking when shifting from first to second gear, quick wear of the clutch kit and dual-mass flywheel. In the front suspension, almost all parts are made of aluminum alloy, but this fact did not affect the durability of its elements at all. Even the stabilizer struts and bushings can withstand approximately 70,000 to 100,000 km. In the rear suspension, an aluminum alloy subframe is made, but all the levers remain steel. Shock absorbers and wheel bearings usually withstand 100,000 km. The body is indifferent to corrosion, because it is not for nothing that most of its parts are made of aluminum alloy. True, the external chrome-plated elements of the case quickly rust. In winter, after washing, the rear spoiler often grabs and it stops retracting. 